Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's episode is date night meals. When I asked you all about a meal that was special to your relationship, I ended up getting something much more special, and because of that, I decided to make this episode a lot more special. Today, you are going to learn about five dishes from five countries that are meaningful to five couples. But instead of the typical webcam or cell phone footage that you're seeing, I hired crews around the world to document these stories for us. Actually. So more than just learning about the dishes, we're gonna get to learn a little bit about one another, the people who actually make up our community. This is Lauren and this is Christopher. Christopher is from Barbados and Lauren is from Canada. And together they live with their family now here in Vancouver. But their story starts somewhere else. I was going on a trip to Barbados and I decided to download Tinder and look at people in Barbados just to, not necessarily to meet the man of my dreams. <laughs> Swipe right. The very last day Lauren spent in Barbados. I think we wanted something to eat, like some quick. I went in the van and he had passed me the fish cakes and it kind of, I, I ate them on the way to the airport. And it was kind of like Chris gave me a piece of his own culture. And their relationship sustained. They traveled back and forth until Chris finally moved to Vancouver to be with Lauren. And along with him came his recipe for fish cakes. We had our wedding day here in, in this house, which is the house I grew up in my whole life. So that holds sentimental meeting. Yeah, it's the first kiss of the married man. <laughs> we had a big reception here with probably around 100 people and me and Chris cooked all the food ourselves. Yeah, I've been the fish gay chef since then. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Of course it looked good. <laughs> We made them for our wedding and they were kind of one of the centerpiece dishes. Now we also have Mars and his favorite food is fish and he loves fish cake. So I said, he's like our fish cake baby because yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nikki came from the fish cakes. <laughs> well, yeah. We're currently still overcoming our big obstacle, which is our sponsorship. We've run into quite a few Roblox it causes a lot of stress because the worst case scenario, of course, is um, being separated and we now have a child together, so. Put Mars between your legs. Mars, here. When I make her fish cakes is like, when she like is high stress and you know, she just wants me to relax. I would just met she on um, fish cakes and yeah. call it a day. Cooking makes me feel open and Alive. Food as love is probably like the appreciation of the meal, the effort it went into preparing said meal. It's like people are giving you the gift of their own story through food, but then we get to share it together, eating it together. Come on, eat it. Mmm. Yum, yum. Mm. <laughs> fish cakes let's do it i have made codfish fritters actually on this channel twice prior once i made them from portugal and another time i made them from jamaica christopher's recipe was a little bit different and i feel like it was the mashed potatoes being added to it <laughs> Okay, I put a couple too many potatoes in here. The whole process of making the fish cakes was pretty simple. There was nothing there to like throw a curveball at you. It was all very straightforward. Okay, that looks good. Time to fry. As a deep frying expert. Ooh, girl, that looks good. I didn't think I was gonna make any mistakes, but then I did make a mistake. I made them a little bit too big. So when I cracked them open. You need to know how you spiced it. Oh, and it also wasn't cooked the whole way through. Cut. <laughs> so I ended up making them smaller. Everything was better that way. When I took them out, I put a little salt on top of it. I think in general, when you fry something, it's good to salt it afterwards, unless it's a sweet dish, obviously. But I think it helps bring out like a lot of flavor. 
For this, I have a neighbor who I've mentioned before, but I always bring her food and I decided that I wanted her to get to try these because she works from home as well. So casually midday, just kind of knocked on her door. I did let her know I was going to come over ahead of time, but not exactly when. <laughs> oh my God, so good. Mm, she's the best neighbor. <laughs> I recommend everyone get a neighbor like this one. <laughs> one of my favorite things about food is sharing it with other people. And it's really nice that I live in a small enough building that I know everybody who I live with, that I'm friends with my neighbors, and that we actually eat together. Like my neighbors come over and we eat meals together all the time. These are really easy to make. You get a lot out of them. So they're really great for like an appetizer for a party. And they're just like, they're just delicious. So 10 out of 10. Our next couple lives in Nigeria, but they're from two very different backgrounds. I am Olajui Bigbolang. I'm Abinaya Baskarin. I, will, I live in Lokoja in Kogi State, Nigeria. I'm from Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. We've been together since 2011. From India and Nigeria, they met somewhere else entirely. We met in Russia to study medicine. I was told to go and knock on this room. So me, I'm a short person, short girl. So I knock on the door, somebody opens the door. I don't see like any head or something, I see chest. I'm like, I'm looking up, this person is just looking down at me. For like the next three months, we're not really friends. She just used to say hi, 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 but after a while, we got to know each other better Then yeah, here we are now. Ultimately, the two got married. And when you share a home like this, you also share food. There are like a lot of differences between us, like different cultures, different faiths. I'm a vegetarian and he's a meat eater. Sounds like it's a crime. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, let me challenge you. Maybe you should try paneer biryani. So I made it for him and he really loved it. I told my brother about it. I told him you must make biryani for, for my brother at least and my parents. Because I know my brother will be very interested in tasting something different. By the time it was all done, he really enjoyed it. Just like, Give me a review. Like, man, yesterday I had a dream and I saw that meal exactly in the dream. It was still nice. I was like, ha, he dreamt about food again. So <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a good thing to experience with everybody. Even my mom, my dad, they made comments. They really enjoyed it, yes. the food, yeah. That's the thing about food. It can bring two people and two families from extraordinarily different backgrounds together. It's a way to connect. It's, it's an activity that you're doing jointly. So you're both in the kitchen, even if it's not for like all the time, but at least you're together. My main work in the kitchen anyways, uh, I'm just there to give her moral support. But after making your meal, we always like sit down and eat together. So it's like more time like quality time to spend together. Yeah, we always eat together. The emotion it brings, the connection it brings is really nice. So it's a different love language and uh, it brings us together as a couple a lot more. It's like it's out of love, it can be nothing else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try to make this paneer biryani. Whew. So this was my first time making biryani. I love paneer. I used store-bought paneer for this dish, but if you wanna know how to make it yourself, my mother-in-law worked with me on a video teaching us all how to make it fresh. Is it like this size paneer? Or like, or like this size? The thing is with store-bought paneer, you need to make it soft again. When you're using paneer like this, you wanna cut it up and then put it in warm water and that'll soften it up so that you can cook with it better. Okay, so like just to say, you can see it's like really hard. I'm gonna put it in this water. It's gonna soften it up. There are a lot of spices and a lot of ingredients that go into it, so I felt like I was a little frazzled. Where her? I swear I had them. <laughs> I am literally drowning in spices. I had that whole meltdown because I couldn't find the green cardamom, but then I found it. Thank goodness. Ultimately, my takeaway from the experience is that making biryani is just about being organized and making sure that you have everything that you need ready when you need it. There's a lot happening in here. <laughs> I feel excited. 
For this dish, I really wanted to share it with my family. So my sister came over, my brother-in-law came over, my husband was here, one of our good friends came over. And it was really nice for all of us to just like sit down together and have this meal that was really different and really special. And I think obviously everybody enjoyed it. Yum. It's great. It's never been as delicious as this teriyaki. It's very good. I definitely enjoyed it. At the end, there was no leftovers. So that, I would say, makes it a 10 out of 10. It was a really, really awesome meal. And I would say, like, difficulty-wise, 7 out of 10. <laughs> in this love story, we're meeting Kelly and Heather, who live together in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the United States. Their meet cute involved wheels and a roller rink. Heather and I met playing roller derby um, here in Minneapolis with the North Star Roller Girls. I asked her to go out with me on New Year's Eve. We've been married, all, no, just over four years. We've been together seven, right? I think so. I told her any dates she's in charge of. <laughs> For Heather and Kelly, the dish that holds significance in their relationship came from Heather's family. The recipe came from my older brother. We call it sausage pasta. I don't know if it actually has a real name. That's not a great name. It's not a great name. <laughs> I moved to the Twin Cities right after college and I moved in with him for a little while and my mother got sick and we lost her. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> okay. Rick would make it and it was very comforting and it made it feel like a family thing. And when we first started dating, I had her come over and I made it for her because I wanted to assure there would be other dates. <laughs> and since then, it has become her favorite dish and we made it for our rehearsal dinner uh, before our wedding and we make it every year for our anniversary. That is always the recipe she requests. Heather and I grew up in very loving homes where food was used very much as an expression of love. And so to be able to come from that and then also share that here, I think was important to both of us. Like it's not just here I made dinner, some nights it is. It's sort of like I made dinner for you because I love you. You know, I want you to have good and delicious and interesting food. Before we begin, let's get this mop up. So rather than for dinner, I made this sausage pasta for lunch. One of the things that I learned in doing this channel is you really should just like get all your chopping done at once because otherwise it's like back and forth, back and forth. It's not fun. There's a French name for it. It's called mise en place. But we're just gonna call it chop up all your stuff. It honestly was a pretty simple recipe to make, which I very much appreciated. And I honestly had fun while cooking. A bounty of sausage. Definitely the highlight of the cooking experience was adding the red wine because the smell was incredible. Um, okay, just the sauce smells so good. The wine cooking, the kitchen smells amazing right now. 10 out of 10 for cooking smells. The nice thing about the sauce though was that you kind of just let it bubble away for a while, so it was a pretty passive cooking experience. Rudget is usually at his office, but on that day he was working from home, so we got to eat lunch together, and it was nice to like take a break in the middle of the day and eat this like really nice homemade pasta dish. Yum. Yum. That is so good. Mm. I loved it. <laughs> Our next couple lives on the other side of the world on a small tropical island. This is Geli and this is Jeff. They live here on Shagao Island in the Philippines. Pretty picturesque, huh? <laughs> this is an island known for surfing, so it's no surprise how these two met. I was surfing and he happened to be one of the surf instructors. So, moto, nag start, nag ila ila, ningo na yanga. Mom, surfing ta, ako itudlo. <laughs> For one hour. And the rest was history. <laughs> In their relationship, they found a common love for cooking. Cooking for me is a form of therapy. 
at the end of the day, I really like to cook a good meal. Jap is also one hell of a cook. Ako yung mo ko ano yah, tapang tabang, mao nang konektado sa sai. But there was one small snag. I didn't like Filipino spaghetti. Sobra paborito kayo. Sambut na ang hot dog, cheese. Di ko kaya explain. Ganong lamig juga kayo. Jap really loves it. So mao tong mo lamian mangyut ko sa kadpag bata pa. Ako nga, kung nai mga birthday, mo atak me, uy nai dami nga spaghetti. Paborito kay na akong lokal na spaghetti. Good. So I learned to cook it as well. Dahil siya malutog ko, mura siya special good niya ba? Masarap sa kanya eh. <laughs> uh, with feelings magluto ba? <laughs> Tila na ko. Dahil <laughs> good. The ingredients for Filipino spaghetti, super simple, just garlic, onions, tomato sauce, a little condensed milk, brown sugar, of course the ground pork, Filipino hot dog, hindi mawawala yun, and bullion cubes. And basically that's it for your Filipino spaghetti. When I'm cooking. He usually stands beside me and just assists me with what I do or what I need. He chops the vegetables because he's very good at it. He's very fast. He's very efficient. I'm just a home cook. He's actually the pro. Pinapatawa ko para lalong sumasarap yung local spaghetti na request ko. And he does the tasting. And then if he likes it, if it's Jap approved, then the meal is done. Lahim yun yung panglasagit. Lahi po siya kung magdongan mo sa usa ka lamisa, magkaon sa imong gihigog ma. Murag, ma-feel ni mo ang spark. Kasayaw ka, kasabot sa imong gibati. Kung sa kakalipay nga, magigdongan ka kaon sa imong gihigog ma. Samot siya galamit yun. So here's the thing with the Filipino spaghetti. I just made this dish for the channel. So I felt like I didn't necessarily need to make it again because like I said, I just made it. <laughs> when I was making it, I went to the Filipino grocery store and I was able to find Filipino spaghetti pasta sauce. This is such a beloved dish that like there is a specific sauce for it. And I'm leaving a link to it online if you wanna try it. And that way you don't have to go through the process of, you know, making the entire sauce. As somebody who also loves hot dogs, having hot dogs in a pasta was a joyful, joyful thing for me to be able to do. I don't think I've ever done that before. Ultimately, this is a very simple pasta dish to make, but it doesn't taste like an Italian pasta. It tastes totally, totally different. So I'm just gonna cut to me trying it so you can see how I felt eating it. <laughs> I really like this. It tastes kind of like a sweeter ragu. The hot dog was good. I mean, I, I, I love hot dogs, so I'm very biased. I think that I was expecting this to be sweeter just based on what everybody has said. And maybe it's just the brand of Filipino spaghetti sauce that I bought, but it did say sweet on the label. I also feel like, like right now, for some reason, I'm really hungry. And so eating this is, um, it's just like really hitting the spot. Welcome to Chorlton, England. Hang on. I'm the home of Toby and Chris. These two have been a couple for quite a while. Since my 30th birthday. Um, you don't know how old you are. Yeah. 14 years? Embarrassingly, when Facebook first started, you used to be able to poke people, and I poked Toby, and then we met up for a drink, and yeah. I've not shaken you off since. Yeah. <laughs> and they decided to get married. For me, who's grown up, you know, knowing that I was gay, and in a time where, you know, you couldn't even talk about it at school with your school teachers, uh, to be then able to legally be married, it was like overwhelmingly emotional. 
when people say to you, oh, it's going to be the best day of your life, I was a bit cynical and I was like, oh, whatever, you know, but it actually was. Their home today is filled with laughter, joy, a dog, <laughs> I'm not kidding, named Beryl. I put Beryl in YouTube as a search and it came up with Beryl's YouTube channel and then I started watching and then this became this. And of course, lots of cooking. Hello. I'm gonna cook. You're cooking it, I'm prepping it. <laughs> One of my old favorites, uh, which is Coco Van. The meal of love. The meal of love. <laughs> I get excited by cooking that. And then I have to cut, I have to chop up all the shallots. Well, yeah, it's definitely the worst job. Maybe you should have said that earlier in relation to what do I love about you? I will pill shallots for you. My granny cooked it and it was a staple of hers and then I, it's become a staple of ours, hasn't it? Yeah, I remember going around to your house at the beginning and you cooking this. So it's then become something that then we now cook together and then we cook for other people as well. It's, it's definitely a sort of like a love dish. I mean, if you look at people's cultures all around the world, Cooking is very much a gift, isn't it, that you give to people. And not only do we cook for each other, we use it also as a means to decompress the day. It does help nurture your relationship because you are spending time with each other, creating something together. People can drift apart, can't they? Yeah, it's so the, connected, isn't so it? the cooking kind of keeps you together, doesn't it? It is so cold outside today, and Coco Van is literally going to be the most perfect meal for this. <sighs> Coco Van. What does say? I got this chop wizard as a gift and I'm gonna try to use it. A woman named Lisa who subscribes to this channel gifted me this chop wizard. Oh. Ah. Using it was so fun and I felt so good and it was so fast. Lisa, I cannot thank you enough. I love that chop wizard, my goodness. <laughs> I'm doing a mix of chicken. Uh, we're doing thighs and legs. Oh, God. I have always just been intimidated by French recipes and I kind of feel like that came through when I was cooking it. God, like, why am I so stressed out? It's French cooking. I feel like the stakes are always so high. Why am I still holding this? <laughs> it's not that this recipe had a lot of elements to it or like a lot of technical cooking things. It just somehow, Maybe just because it was French. I got, you know, I, I took it in too much. <laughs> Ta-da! I love that this was another dish cooking with wine and like emptying out the whole bottle. <laughs> I felt something <laughs> when I was doing it. The kitchen smelled so amazing as the chicken was slowly cooking in that wine sauce. Because I felt like this was kind of a special meal, I wanted to have over some special friends to share it with, so I invited my friend Liam and his husband Jeremy over. When I first started this YouTube channel, Liam reached out to me and asked if I wanted to meet up, and I said yes, and like we became fast friends. He is definitely somebody who is curious about food and loves food, so I was really happy that he was able to come over with his husband and have this meal with me and Rajat. It's got like that really rustic feel. I love it. Perfect on a cold day. 10 out of 10 would recommend to friends and family. Wine, wine braised chicken, and fish. <laughs> yeah, you could feel the love. Obviously, this episode was a labor of love. It took a very long time to put everything together. I would love to tell more stories about all of you like this. I think that they're beautiful and it's a really great way to get to know one another. So let me know in the comments what you would like to see more of and we can just take it from there. I hope that you liked this episode as much as I enjoyed making it and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah.